welcome back again. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, the workshops of this morning and just after lunch break. Uh, I think it's really exciting to actually be able to sit together again uh, on some tables and discuss things in real life. It gives me way more energy than just staring for the two screens all day. On the other side, I also hope that uh, on the online side everybody was able to follow as well. So, um, for the rest of the day, we have uh, one more presentation uh, before we head to the Operator Awards. Um, so, um, for this presentation, Vivi will uh, tell us a bit about how they actually bring uh, the MyData operators into practice with the city of Helsinki. So, Vivi, the floor is yours. Um. Thank you very much, Kuhn. And uh, hello, it is indeed an absolute delight to be in the same room uh, with all you wonderful folks. And um, hello, everyone uh, online as well. Um, my name is Vivi Lahtenoja. I'm a uh, special advisor for data policy at the city of Helsinki. And uh, I'm here to, to talk to you a little bit about some work in progress. Uh, that's happening with the with the city of Helsinki um, in turning the MyData declaration, including the operator model, uh, into implementation. So, before I get started on the actual implementation, I just wanted to say a couple of words about why Helsinki is um, involved in MyData and, and and what we've done so far. So. Um, the, the same year that the declaration came out, 1917, <coughs> the city of Helsinki signed it. Um, in 2019, our digital program included the policy that residents of the city can influence the how the data collect collected about them is used. Um, last year, in 2020, uh, we published a data strategy that includes a commitment to the MyData principles. And just this year, we have officially joined MyData Global as a member organization. And throughout the years, and now especially, there are a number of projects and pilots and experiments putting these commitments into action. And um, I'm going to be talking you through some of, the, some of the things that are happening. Now, um, what I'm about to, to talk to you about is, is a from a work in progress paper um, that um, we're writing with uh, the chief digital officer for the city of Helsinki, Mikko Rusama, uh, Mika Huhtamäki, uh, deputy CEO of Vastu Group, and myself. And um, this, what I'm about to tell you is really like a sneak preview of, uh, of what's in the, the full publication itself. So uh, keep your eyes and ears out uh, for, for the release um, later this year. Um, so what we start with in this um, in this paper is really the description of the two paradigm shifts that we as the city of Helsinki are committed to making happen. Um, the first is from the shift from a reactive to a proactive mode of operation. We don't we want to be the Recording kind of in progress. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we want to be the, the kind of city that's there, that's what you need, when you need it, where you need it, without you necessarily having to go through a process of, of asking and finding out and, and requesting. Um, we want to um, make the lives of our residents, our visitors, um, as, as easy and simple as possible. And the other shift that we firmly believe in and, and are working towards realizing is, from, is in terms of data from outright exploitation to the human-centric use of personal data, which is obviously what my data is all about and why we're all here as well. Um, so one of the things that we cover um, in 
in what we're writing about are some of the, the challenges for, for data processing, specifically in, in cities. I won't go through these in, in details, but any one of you who's worked with the, the public sector or the municipal local governments will, will recognize these, I'm sure. So there are issues of, of data that is very siloed, even within uh, one unit of uh, the city organization. There are a number of legacy systems of, of different degrees of legacy, if you will. Um, the pr permission management around a vast organization like a city uh, can be incredibly fragmented. Um, when there is the need to share data between uh, different organizations or different organizational units, um, there are special challenges with that. Um, there's obviously a very high need for, for transparency as a public organization um, for, for how and what personal data we use. Um, and there is a certain amount of regulatory uncertainty, um, especially um, as a public sector organization, we deal with a lot of specialized national legislation in addition to, for example, the EU GDPR. Um, and all of it is um, being applied and um, interpreted differently and, and developed also as we speak. But this is what I uh, wanted to spend a little bit more time on. Um, some of the opportunities that we've um, identified for proactive human-centric services for, for residents. Um, I'll give you a, a quick description of each of these and there will be uh, detail on the kind of data types that we're using, the legal basis we're using for processing, what are the identi identification methods and, and the other kind of like nitty gritty details of these use cases. Um, but one, uh, the one that I want to start with is um, preventative healthcare. So the city of Helsinki has developed something called the health benefit analysis tool, um, which is a tool that analyzes patients' healthcare data and applies a set of um, good practice rules and over 300 criteria in order to recommend appropriate treatment. So all of this data is pseudonymized. Uh, it's derived from existing health records and it gives uh, a medical professionals this kind of an overview of a, a patient's test results, previous diagnoses, sort of a picture of, of their um, uh, health and, and history without disclosing their identity, right? Um, and this data is used to highlight these kind of care gaps that inadvertently do occur in, in healthcare. Um, where a patient is not receiving the treatment um, that they should be getting based on their kind of situation and history. Um, high risk patients are prioritized um, using this tool um, and sort of based on their need for intervention and, and they're invited to discuss their health issues with their doctor um, where this pseudonymized patient ID is used to identify them then back in the, the health records. So this is uh, one of the, the kind of uh, uh, tools and initiatives that we are, are uh, developing right now and working with. Um, the second example I wanted to share is an automated qualification check. Um, so this is from a completely different world of, of things, really. Uh, but the, uh, the city uh, construction services um, they, they provide services in, in construction, environmental management, logistics and stuff. And in order to um, operate some of the vehicles um, that are city owned, the, the employees naturally need a certain kind of qualification, certain kind of permits. Um, and currently how the um, employees kind of prove that yes, I have a valid driver's license with qualifications X, Y and Z, is that they physically visit their supervisor to show their driver's license, and the supervisor confirms the validity in this kind of face-to-face -face meeting. So what we've done with the city construction services uh, is uh, we've developed a kind of digital booking calendar for each vehicle, where when you are booking a vehicle as an employee who is going to drive that or operate it, um, 
the validity of the employee's driver's license and permits is automatically verified from the national agency responsible for, for maintaining these records. And this, is, um, this has been a pretty cool case uh, in the sense that we're not just using, like in the me sort of healthcare example, we were using the, the data from kind of one um, unit within the city of Helsinki. Over here, what we're doing is we're actually um, looking into a national agency's data registry and making use of that for our city employees as well. And uh, that's, that's been a really, really interesting and fruitful process as well to, to find out how that um, can work. And uh, the, the third point um, or example I wanted to give uh, was the streamlined process to qualify for subsidized daycare, which was w something that we're working, working on, what we're in the initial stages of right now. Um, so in Finland, uh, daycare services are in large part organized by cities and municipal governments, and um, they are, um, and they require the parents or guardians to pay fees to pay for daycare. Um, but according to Finnish law, your level of income as a family affects these fees. So some, some categories are eligible for subsidies, right? And currently information on this like family income has to be submitted by filling out a form and then proving documentation either by paper uh, in the mail or through secure email as PDFs um, to the customer's uh, customer fee unit of the city, right? And in 2019, over 26,000 children attended Helsinki's daycare services. So that's quite a lot of PDFs to, to go through, right? So what we're working on right now is a way for the guardian of a child to authorize the city to verify their family income from the national tax authority records. And this was, would eliminate the need for uh, this elaborate process <coughs> for providing and then checking proof. Um, we could then automate the verification process and proactively offer <laughs> kind of subsidized fees without even an application from the guardian themselves. So this is kind of a, a, another example of, of trying to kind of make the lives of, 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 of parents with small children who probably have a lot of things on their plates uh, just a little bit easier. Um, the next part I... Um, I'm going to go through really, really quickly. Uh, so what we do in, uh, in our working paper, we're uh, just describing some of the, the kind of operating environment um, in which we are. So um, there's a description of the regulatory landscape. Um, like I mentioned, there's the GDPR, but there's also a lot of national legislation in, in Finland that's specifically to, specific to municipalities or specific to kind of sectors like healthcare and so on. Um, we go through some of the, the roles in the data and identity ecosystem um, just to position um, us as a city within that. Um, we describe some business realities. Uh, of data sharing sort of with and within the, the public sector. And we also go through some ethical and societal considerations of the kind of data use and sharing that we're talking about here. Um, but then the, the actual implementation of how we're making these things happen. Uh, we don't have a definitive illustration um, as of yet. Um, so there are many ways to kind of conceptualize how the different parts of what we're doing relate to each other. Um, so what I thought I'd do is actually use the reference model from the Understanding My Data Operators um, white paper, um, which describes the, the functional elements of a My Data Operator. And the, the implementation at Helsinki um, is in some ways related to um, all but value exchange and data model management as of now. So there are elements of identity management, uh, elements of permission management, um, elements of service management, 
as well as personal data transfer and, and store um, elements. Um, so in the, in the identity management space, uh, we have a, a centralized authentication service, um, which aggregates different identity providers and, and provides one single point um, of entry to all city services. So you can, for example, log in with the social media credentials and only kind of do your strong identification uh, if it's required by the service that you're uh, interacting with. Um, we uh, are integrated with the, the national um, identity provider, suomi.fi, for that, for strong authentication. Um, and then a sort of in the identity management itself, um, a, a generated um, contextual identifier key, or what we're calling a Helsinki ID, uh, is created when you're first logging into this portal. And it's used across all the integrated services for their kind of individual service profiles. Um, and the, the portal also then can sort of shows you what social media accounts you may have logged in with or connected with this with this Helsinki ID with the option to always remove them. Um, and we are trying, um, or like the, the principle with this is that we, we are using this like uh, Helsinki ID as the, the citywide kind of identifier instead of something like a social security number, um, which is uh, so kind of like one of the principles for, for how we are, are building the identity system around this. Um, in the second box, um, permission management. Um, so the, we're, we're talking mostly about consent at this stage uh, in terms of the GDPR um, basis for, for legal processing, um, but we can, um, we're also looking to include data here on um, which, um, which other legal basis uh, data is being used, um, so you have visibility into that as well. Um, but this kind of dashboard idea um, of permission management uh, is where one, you can see all the city pro, uh, services that are currently using data about you um, and the, the basis on which they do so. <coughs> and, um, sorry. Another uh, feature of, of kind of permission management that we have implemented so far is uh, delegated permission. So um, kind of uh, doing, conducting your business um, with the city of Helsinki uh, on behalf of another person or uh, on behalf of a legal entity. Um, so there are kind of uh, obviously companies and organizations based in Helsinki who also uh, need to interact with the city. Uh, so as, as part of our kind of permission management um, whole, uh, we've also um, developed ways in which um, permission can be delegated from a company to a person who can then be authenticated. Um, on the third block, which is service management, um, this uh, is also, I mean, it's, it's included in what I mentioned before, it's kind of like this dashboard of all these services that are using your data, um, but it also um, contains transaction information and an audit trail from the, the services that you do use. Um, so there's a, an element of kind of logging and, and accountability um, in, baked in here. Um, eventually, we're looking to enable the inclusion of third-party services um, into into the the portal, and we've developed this this component, uh, which has also been open sourced, called Access Gateway, um, and we're developing um, and helping develop this um, minimum interoperability mechanism for MIM4 with open and agile smart cities, which enables um, third party services to interoperate with the the services at the at the city of Helsinki provides, and. Um, we're also building in messaging functionality um, with this implementation. So through the, the one-stop kind of uh, un identification route, you can also like, conduct your business with the different um, services that you are um, um, using with the city of Helsinki.
Um, then on the on the personal data transfer side, um, we are we're also building the kind of technical means of transferring um, data between a person's uh, personal data storage, which I'll come to next, and and the registers of of city services. And like the uh, the previous point, we're also looking to enable transfer of data between uh, the personal data storage and, and third party applications eventually as well. And um, in some cases, it might become necessary for a person to uh, make data requests of kind of the different various different departments of the the city itself and request them um, for for reuse in another service so this kind of data request management uh, is something that we're looking into as well um, and then finally uh, on the data storage side um, we're looking into a kind of private uh, data storage for each person, um, which would, for example, host these um, the the kind of results of data requests that uh, a person can make um, through the portal, um, and it would also contain this kind of core personal data register, um, which is um, separate from from because all all the different services the city uses. Um, require slightly different sets of data, uh, but they all have some common elements, right? So most of them will need to know your name um, or your address and, and things like this. Um, so there's also kind of like um, what we're building is a, is a core, uh, core register for, for the person, um, which gets some of its data from the National Population Registry Center uh, and some which um, you can provide for your, uh, yourself for for that so if you for example want to be contacted primarily through email you can you know in enter your email as a primary communication channel or uh, if you'd rather get a, an sms message then you can enter your phone number there um, and these are the details that you can obviously edit at all times um, so um in conclusion, this is um, a lot of stuff that we're doing right now. Uh, it's part of a number of different um, projects, a number of different pilots that are in, in different phases. Um, but we are seeing this kind of um, my data implementation uh, really emerge and start to take shape. And we are really appreciating the fact that they're like the devil really is in the details when we're looking into these things. Uh, like I mentioned, there's a lot of detail um, in the paper itself on like exactly how we are doing each one of these things. Um, so um, look forward to to reading the, the full paper as soon as it comes out very soon. So that's me. Thank you very much. Okay, um, any questions? Um, Sarah? Yeah, so these actually uh, queues, are they available to citizens? Can you repeat the question as well? So that they mm -hmm. Okay. Recording stopped. <laughs> so, so the tools are already available, right? Some of them are in production. Um, and some, some are being piloted and some are being kind of proof of concept. So these are very different levels of, of, of implementation right now. Okay, so I think my question is related to what we discussed this morning. Um, is the city providing these uh, services to citizens? So what does it mean in terms of business models for a city? Is the city paying? Who's paying? The, the city is paying, yes. And and is considering to like. So it's it's uh, the strategic objectives of the city are to like digitize as much um, of its service provision as possible. So that's a commitment uh, in the in the very very fresh uh, city strategy that just came out about a month ago. Um, and uh, we're also kind of in our in our data strategy, we're committed to to providing the the best kind of services we can like, according to the my data principles to to our citizens. So like this is uh, like a strong mandate from from our leadership to to do this. 
And then there was, uh, well. Do, do you mind if I ask my question? <laughs> uh, <the> <laughs> All right, sure. <laughs> I've hijacked the, the mic. Hi, it's Eric. Um, uh, to, to follow up on, on Sarah's question, I wanted to know if you would measure the, uh, the, uh, the ROI, the return on investment, not just in terms of money, financial returns, but also added services, satisfaction of the citizen, etc. because this could be quite interesting to, to, mm -hmm. to build the case further. So the question is, do you do, you, do, you do it? And do you plan to do it? Um, that's not in, in operation right now, but there is, especially when it comes to the, some of the key objectives of the, the new, new city strategy, which include this, this uh, streamlining and, and providing of better digital services, uh, that will be measured um, absolutely over, over this next kind of um, political term. Yeah. And yeah, now I have it. So, uh, um, uh, you, you you often mentioned we are we, we implement this and we implement that. So, wh who's actually or how is basically how's the role distribution between the city of Helsinki and are there also other uh, let's say private parties involved? For example, I saw in the white paper also Fasto Group. So, are there other private companies involved that build components, or is is the public-private collaboration, or is it? Just uh, or is it uh, in the end uh, the components are provided by uh, the city of Helsinki? Um, so th this is a, a public-private collaboration um, in that there are a number of public-private collaborations <laughs> involved, right? So so there are um, projects. One in which uh, Vastu Group uh, is involved, um, hence uh, Mika also contributing to this paper. Um, but sort of the the terms of of agreement with uh, with our partners, um, especially in this case with the open sourcing of the access gateway, was that we we require as a city of Helsinki that these components be made open source uh, by by our commercial partners um, within within the city as well. Like this is this is uh, depending on kind of the stage of where um, of how mature this uh, work is. Um, the, the division of labor differs, right? So very um, kind of stuff that goes fully into production and, and is, is there available, that's kind of city provided. But then in the earlier stages, uh, especially, we do a lot of collaboration also with private companies. I have a go. question online. There's a, uh, also a lot of appreciation for your presentation, but Dixon has a question saying that he's interested to know if the city of Helsinki prefers open sourced over closed bind-in platforms. Um, I would say yes, we prefer open source, yes. Okay, We're, uh, we'll close there, so thank you very much everyone. <laughs>